first story. My entitled sister is upset that I let my boyfriend touch my surrogate bump because it's her baby and I can't let him do that. Hi Reddit. So last year I 29F agreed to be a surrogate for my sister. Let's call her N and her husband both 27 due to an unfortunate high likelihood of infertility diagnosis in my sister. They didn't have the funds to hire an actual surrogate and I am basically the only person they're actually close with who has a child or requirement to be a surrogate, meaning I was essentially their only option. I didn't love the idea at first, but after watching them struggle to conceive for the last two years and some light insistence from my sister, I said okay. They did agree to pay me some form of compensation, but from googling, it seems like it's maybe 30% of what it would normally cost. Anyway, fast forward to today, and I am seven months along, and all has realistically gone pretty well. My sister has definitely been checking in on me all the time, but I can't really blame her for that. But the problem occurred a couple days ago. So a couple months ago, I met a guy at a work event, let's call it C, and we hit it off. He has a couple kids of his own, so he doesn't mind anything about my situation, and it's been going really well. Now that we've been together for a couple months, I wanted to introduce him to my sister, so I set up a dinner for the three of us originally four, but her husband couldn't make it. My sister picked me up and drove me over since he was going to meet us there, and as soon as I got in the car, I already felt like she was upset, but didn't think anything of it. We sat down at the restaurant and waited until C arrived. He came over and greeted us, giving me a kiss and quickly rubbing my belly. Nothing really out of the ordinary, but I could see my sister's bulge. I was super confused, but didn't say anything about it. We went about our night, and she played nice-ish, but was pretty quiet, and honestly, it was a pretty awkward meal. When we left, and I got back in the car, she just unloaded into me, saying how weird it was that he kept touching my belly. I asked her what the hell she was talking about, and she said that apparently, he basically had his hands on it the whole night, and also that, it was super weird because it's her baby. I just rolled my eyes and told her, regardless of it being her baby, it was my body, which just made her even more mad. I don't know. She hasn't talked to me in the last two days over this. I really don't feel like she has any right to police physical intimacy between me and my boyfriend, just because it's her baby I'm carrying. Like look, I'm pregnant and I have a boyfriend. Obviously he is going to touch my bump. Ada, edit. Just because I'm seeing this a lot, a baby is not biologically mine. It's her and her husband's. I'm a gestational surrogate. Also, maybe I undersold it in my initial description. But he did touch it a lot more than just when he greeted us. He basically had his hand on it, the whole time we weren't eating. I didn't really think anything weird about it, but I figured I'd clarify. Relevant comments. No system 2510. I'm not making a judgment. But I do just want to say that him keeping his hand on your belly, for an extended period of time, like your edit describes, is pretty bizarre. I think it definitely goes beyond the territory of him just being an affectionate partner and saying hi to the baby or something. Pregnancy fetishes do exist, and while this isn't damning evidence, it's definitely an indicator, at least. As a thought experiment, has he done anything else that might suggest he's one of those guys? OP. Someone else commented about this earlier too, but I don't really know what would suggest that one way or another. He does touch my belly a lot. It's basically his default spot where he puts his hand, and he makes a lot of comments and jokes about how big I am. I don't really think either of those things are out of the ordinary though. Kenobi Zilla Fortu. NTA. But I'd keep an eye on the BF. I'm pregnant with my second. And my husband only touches the bump when I ask him if he wants to feel a kick. Your very new boyfriend having his hands on the bump all the time is strange to me. And I'd be worried about a kink. But your sister has no business policing how you live your life as long as you're medically healthy. And she needs to take a step back and remember what an incredible favor you are doing for her and her husband. OP. Thank you for sharing your experience. His actions haven't felt out of the ordinary for me, because my ex-husband was also very hands-on when I was pregnant with our daughter. Massive homework 19430. Your boyfriend of two months isn't the father. Update. One month later. It's been over a month since my OP, and I was surprised by how much interest the post got. So I figured I owe you guys an update post. Sister update. On the sister front, all is well. We talked it over very shortly after my post. We had some complicated emotions to work through, but we're in a good place now. It is too long to get into here, but I can tell you on this front that it was a happy ending, and she is very excited to meet her baby next month. Boyfriend update. This one went a little different. There were a lot of people in the comments suggesting he had a pregnancy fetish, which, prior to my post, I didn't even know existed. I pondered it, 
but wasn't really sold on the idea, and coincidentally, he actually went on a work trip for about three weeks shortly after. So we didn't really talk until he came back to town, which was about a week and a half ago now. Honestly, when he came back, I'd almost forgotten about that as a possibility. So when I went to see him for the first time in nearly a month at his apartment, and he instantly lifted up my shirt and told me how much bigger I'd gotten, I didn't really think anything of it. He was right. I did actually grow a lot, and it seemed like a normal enough reaction, but looking back on it now, it wasn't even like he hugged me, greeted me, or gave me a kiss. It was just straight away, right to my bump. We ended up getting dinner with one of my friends later that same night. Again with me still in some form of denial or just inattention. I guess, just like the last time, I didn't really notice his behavior being weird. But when he went home and I went with her to her house, she had some questions similar to those of my sister. Is that not exhausting for you? She asked me, which I was just confused by. All the belly touching and rubbing, and the comments, jokes and stuff, she followed up. Me. It doesn't seem too irregular to me. People make jokes and comments to me all the time, even you do. Sure, I'll make one every now and then. But in a one-hour dinner, he made so many. Like he described you as his, overinflated girlfriend. Something about being ready to pop. Something else about a balloon. And I know there were others I'm forgetting. Hearing it now from my sister, my friend, and from Reddit, it finally kind of clicked for me that maybe in fact, everyone else was right. I had her drop me at his place, and I confronted him about it. Not in an aggressive way or anything, but just asking him if it was true. To my surprise, he looked at me in surprise and just said, Uh yeah, I thought you knew. Sorry, I thought it was kind of obvious. We had a long talk about it. I don't really think a fetish is an inherently bad thing and people like to make them more taboo than they need to be. While his behavior was obviously sometimes strange, it was never violent or honestly even upset me. I told him I would think about it if I wanted to continue seeing him, which he was okay with and gave me space. I haven't reached out to him yet, but I am thinking about it, as I did enjoy the time we spent together, even regardless of his inclinations. Anyway, those are the updates. I hope you enjoyed the happy end. Sort of happy ending for both. Second story. My entitled wife cheated on me and openly resents our children. Still, my family takes her side, forcing me to reconcile, or else they will disown me. For context. Coming into the new year, I had no idea my wife had been at the bare minimum having an emotional affair with a coworker. On New Year's Eve, before I found out about this, she came home and acted extremely cold toward me and our kids. She was angry. Earlier on that evening, she asked if she could go out to have one drink with a female coworker whom I knew and trusted. I told her that was cool, but that the kids were staying up for the ball drop, so as long as she could be back to celebrate with them, I was fine with it. Well, she ended up getting off of work at 11.30 and barely had enough time to get home. After the ball dropped, she cried and cried. I asked her what was wrong, and she said she got invited to a friend's house to have drinks with them. All three of them women, all married. I had no issue. I said, look, I'm not sure what's wrong or why you're crying about this. That's fine. You deserve a girl's night out every once in a while. I don't mind watching the kids. Just go. I put the kids to bed, she left. And then about three hours later, so 3 a.m., I tried to contact her. No answer. I wait about 15 minutes. Call her again. No answer. I call her friend, who she's supposed to be with. No answer. She then texts me back five minutes later and says, Yeah, I'm still coming home tonight. We're still drinking. Never in our six years of marriage had I felt a gut feeling that something else was going on. But that night it all hit me. I went through our phone records and found another number. I was unfamiliar with that she had been in contact with all night. Ignoring my calls, texting that number in between, etc. She had also been texting this number for a three-month period daily. I never suspected that she would be texting another dude while right beside me watching family movies either, as time had shown. How I didn't see this, I have no idea. Maybe she had this individual listed as mom on her phone. I don't know. I had never gotten this vibe or felt this way about our entire marriage. I was blindsided by it. Anyway. I confront her about it through text with the proof, like an idiot. She speeds home and deletes everything on her phone. There is no way of getting the backups restored. There is no way she will ever know she did not meet up with this guy. Upon finding this out, I immediately told her I wanted a divorce. It was at this point that she began getting violent with me. I was talking SHT about everything I had been doing to keep us financially stable. The 18-hour work days kept a roof over our heads. 
She told me that I needed to leave, even though I pay rent, and both our kids are asleep. I refused. We slept in separate rooms that night. And the next day she tried to act like nothing even happened. She claimed that she remembered we'd fought, but couldn't remember what it was about. So I show her the phone records, even though I'm positive she was just trying to pull some crap. She confesses who the individual was and says they flirted a lot, but never met up. I told her if that was true, she'd have no issues restoring the text messages she deleted. At which point it was confirmed she deleted everything and deleted her last backup. She also saved a backup after they were deleted the night everything went to SHT. Since then, she's tried hard to convince me that they never did anything and never saw each other aside from work. I keep finding bits and pieces of things that don't make sense. Chunks of texts were deleted from her friend's messages around that time. Pictures on her Google Drive from that night where she was with who she said she was were deleted from her phone for what reason? The most damning evidence I have is for a two-hour period on New Year's Eve. They stopped texting each other, then randomly started texting again at around 3 a.m. when I started calling and got that feeling. My gut tells me she left her friend's place, went to his place, and went back. Or she went straight to his place from our place, then went to her friends when she found out I was calling them. There are revealing pictures of herself. She never sent me on her Google Drive, taken on Snapchat. She's since given me all her attention. She initiates intimacy tenfold. The texting stopped. She shows me everything on her Snapchat chat, and even downloads her data to show me she's not hitting other people up. I'm seeing the side of her I haven't seen since we were married all those years ago. But I can't help but trust my gut in demanding a divorce. I feel like she's kept things from me. Not knowing for sure is killing me inside. My parents know all of this and keep pressuring me to work it out and not dwell. My brothers are saying F that get a divorce. Am I wrong about getting a divorce? Keep in mind the dates. It's now been over four months since this occurred. I'm positive she cut the individual completely out. But I still can't get over not knowing 100%. And my gut tells me she's still lying. Edit. If some of this is confusing ask, and I will clarify. I will also give context where needed. Also. Sorry for the way this was written. I'm aware there is some jumping back and forth, etc. I'm just scatterbrained right now. It's honestly getting to me more now than the night I found out. It just keeps building. I feel stupid. Edit too. Also. I forgot to add that the individual in question is an employee she manages. As in. She is his direct supervisor. I've heard there are greater legal consequences for this. But I have no idea. For clarification. The individual in question is actually morbidly obese. I'm by no means fit. But I'm not fat either. I went back and looked at the timestamps for the pictures that were deleted of her and her friends that night. On Google Drive before that two-hour period of no texting during and after, there were several pictures taken with verified timestamps on them. As such, they cannot be changed on Google Drive. Whether or not she has a friend who's tech-savvy and was able to do that within the 10 minutes, it took her to get home upon confronting, I don't know. Is this possible? It's also worth adding that I come from a family that has thoroughly convinced one of my cousins that she needs to stay in her marriage, even when her husband became solely reliant on her and got addicted to coke. Is still addicted to coke and physically abused her. All because, by golly, no one in this family has ever gotten a divorce, so essentially, doing so would get me disowned by my parents, my sister, all my cousins, all my aunts, and all my uncles. But I would still have the support of my two brothers. Update 1. I am currently on a morning break at work. I have been reading through the comments. I have off tomorrow all day, so I will be heavily weighing my options when I get some time to myself tomorrow. I may not update tomorrow, but I'll update you when I can. Thank you for all the positive and negative input. The best thing I can do right now is just get through the work week. Get my kids from daycare and be mentally present for them. I've been ignoring her since last night, and she's been snapping and calling me all morning to see what's wrong. Relevant comments. OP on his wife lying to him, and the family telling him to reconsider divorcing. OP, I'll be honest with you. The two main reasons I've tried to tough it out are, 1. The kids. Even though she pretty much said F all of us on New Year's Eve. And 2. For some reason, my parents have really been pressuring me to stay. It's effing with me, and I don't know why. They keep reminding me that no one in this family has ever gotten a divorce. Blah blah blah, they said I'll most likely never end up seeing my children again. Even though in my state, if a spouse is found to have cheated, this essentially gives up their rights to children if a divorce is filed. I really don't understand how my own parents can sit there and feed me bullcrap stories about people they know who went through it 
and came out as a better couple. It really feels like they're taking her side in everything that happened, while ignoring every truth. Inevitable True 7 and 2 23 Did she come home acting extremely cold? Or did she work until 11? OP Silence Our daughter ran up to her for a hug, and she started crying. She then got really irritated when our daughter asked her for a drink. Something that still doesn't sit right with me. She started yelling at her saying, Mommy needs some effing space. When I tell you, there was literally no sign of all this crap until that. She hid everything extremely well. Also, everyone is saying what they are thinking about the two-hour period. Yes, that was my thought. I went back through Google Drive and looked at everything that was removed from her phone. There were pictures and selfies taken with her friends at the place she was supposed to be during the time period before and after it. I doubt she's tech-savvy enough to edit timestamps on Google Drive once everything's backed up. This isn't to say they never met up. This isn't to say she doesn't know how to do that. And it still doesn't make a difference with everything she did. Like I said, we are weighing options tomorrow. I will reach out to a lawyer tomorrow. Update. My wife had an emotional affair at the bare minimum and may have cheated. Probably did, but I will never admit it. Here is the update. I sit here typing this out on my morning break while listening to Tuesdays Gone by Leonard Skynard. After a long day of considering my options on Friday, I sat my wife down on Friday evening when she got off work and I had out the kids to bed. As soon as I brought up that my trust in her was completely gone, she immediately became argumentative and essentially stated, I thought we had left this in the past. You never trusted me, did you? I responded with, Even if you didn't do anything physical or meet up with him outside of work, you'll never let me see those text messages. You'll never pull the Snapchat data. She responded, you're right. Marriage is based on trust, and if you don't trust me, then maybe we ought to call it quits. The irony in this is that I worked 18-19 hour days for the past few years, barely being able to do anything I wanted to do in my life because I was supporting our children, getting them to bed, cleaning the house all the time, doing all the cooking, and barely even getting enough sleep. It probably took years off my life just from the stress. She said, F the kids, F you and essentially went out to party with her friends, all the while ignoring calls from me and our daughter asking where she was, while also responding to her bare minimum emotional affair partner. I am not getting into all the details so as to not repeat myself between this and the update. Long story short in my state, we have to be separated for a year before a divorce can be finalized. When I agreed with her that we should start separating, and that I had already been in contact with a lawyer, she freaked the F out on me. She begged me not to go through with it. But alas, next Friday, I will be dropping her off at her parents, a few hours away. The kids will be staying with me for now with the help of one of my brothers. I told her there was only one way I would put this off for now. That was pull the data, pull the texts. Prove your case. She looked down at the ground. One more time. And she told me that's a violation of her privacy. We haven't spoken since. For now, for my kids. God. Keep on keeping on. Update. Trickle truth. First. It was a guy in a different state. Second, it was a co-worker. Third, it was someone underneath her that she supervises. Fourth, and just now, I randomly got a text from her stating, she may have told him she loves him. But I instantly regretted it. And that's it. Right, Dr. Evil. Also, let me reiterate. The process of separation starts this coming Friday. In my state, you cannot divorce immediately. It takes a full year. I say this because of all the people stating, just divorce and be done with it, and also those stating, stop giving second chances. Relevant comments. Scruffer's dad. OP, you do realize that your attorney can subpoena her phone records and texts, right? If you believe there was cheating, have your lawyer get all those messages. Then you'll know, and she'll be out of luck. OP, definitely going to happen. I've already been in contact with one, and in the state I live in, if there was infidelity, she essentially loses any choice in the matter of where the kids stay. Tab. 1,234,566,788. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I've been in a similar situation. He wouldn't show me the texts. I spent about a half hour clearing, and then he let me see his phone. Lol. OP, for me, it's pretty black and white. I'm 99 99.99% sure she physically cheated. I'd love to just believe her and move on, but I can't. Not only did she delete all texts between them, she deleted all texts from multiple friends and co-workers from that same time as well, but left the ones from prior and after. As far as I'm concerned, her friends were in on it, as was anyone else she deleted text from. Third story. 
OP ditched her brother's wedding because Syl hadn't invite her seven siblings and her mom for dress selection. I'm a 30F with seven younger siblings, a 25M, a 21M, and girls 22, 20, 18, and twins 17. Our large family is close. We've been through a lot together. Strife, arguments, but we've overcome them all. Others around us look to us as an example of how close siblings and parents should be. We're also big on tradition and our culture. My brother, Mark, 25 years old, was the cheapest sib among us. He would always ask for money from our parents and us. God knows what he would spend it on, since he kept coming back to ask for more. He never contributed anything to the household, not even to buy groceries. Really selfish. Last year, Mark got engaged. The date for the wedding was set for May. We were all so excited to be a part of the wedding. We joked about attire, the playlist for the reception, etc. He asked our parents for help paying for the wedding. They agreed to pay more than half of the price, since it would be the first wedding in the household. We later learned that he dropped at least $8,000 of his own money into the wedding. It turns out he wasn't as broke as we thought. One day, we all sat down to talk about wedding plans. As we were joking around, Mark gave us a list of things that would be done for the wedding. He started mentioning catering, venue, colors and pretty tame overall. We nodded in agreement, since everything seemed normal. Then he told us that Olive, his fiancée, had already picked out and purchased a dress. We as a family didn't see the dress and still don't know what it looks like to this day and weren't there with her to try dresses on. We missed that moment with her. The women of the family, including my mother, were bummed that we weren't there for the dress fitting, but we assured ourselves that whatever dress was picked was perfect. It was their wedding after all, so it shouldn't be too bad, right? Mark continued to list off more things about the wedding that he had finalized. The venue he chose was a four-hour drive, several states from our hometown, somewhere we've never been. The officiator was someone we didn't know. He didn't know him either. The list of things that were set grew and grew. We were more and more troubled. Then, Mark dropped the bombshell. OP, you and your partner will be at the bridal party. Sam, my other brother, was also at the party. We asked, what about your other sisters? Oh, they're just going to be in the reception part. Why aren't they going to be in the main wedding? That's a decision I'm making. What is the actual reason? Why exclude your siblings from the white wedding? I saw someone else do that at their wedding. I figured I could do that too. We were shocked and unsatisfied with his answer. I was at the wedding with my other brother, but not any of the girls. The rest of the family was visibly upset. Where'd this come from? I'm standing up for my siblings. Yes, it's his wedding, but if my siblings won't be a part of it, I won't be either. I would include my own family at my wedding. Am I wrong for that? Additional information from the OP. I would like to offer some clarity about what some of the comments have been saying. Not to justify myself, but to explain the culture behind everything. And why we're upset 3000 character limits are fun. In my culture, it is customary for the family of the man to plan for and run the wedding. All members of the immediate family are involved in major roles, including the siblings. This is true for all male children. If any members of the family are excluded, it is a sign of animosity or hatred. Excluding family members from the wedding party is like a middle finger to them. There has never been a wedding in our extended family where none of the siblings or parents were involved, unless there was some sort of malice behind it. My parents' wedding anniversary included all my siblings and myself in the bridal party. All the cousins we have got married with their families, even traveling and paying for everyone to fly to another country to attend and participate in the ceremony. Excluding the younger girls would send a message to the rest of the extended family that there is something wrong between all of us. From my observation, I haven't seen anything happening between Mark and the other girls. We all get along just fine we even live in the same house together. This is why we were insistent on the reason why he wasn't including the rest of the girls. It goes against our tradition, and we see it as a sign of resentment. Verdict. Removed before verdict rendered. Update. Three weeks later. This serves as an update on my previous post that I made a few weeks ago. It seems that, because of recent updates, there are more details that I need to include. To summarize, I'm a 30F with a large family, including two younger brothers and four younger sisters. I made a post previously stating that my brother, Mark 25, was going to have a wedding in May. He only wanted me and my other brother to be at the wedding party and my other sisters to be excluded. There are two reasons why I deleted the original post. 1. Shame. It wasn't fun being called an awe by a lot of people. I felt bad. I didn't like the criticism, and the emotions I felt at the time drove me to do it. 2. 
I knew that there was something more to it than what I was writing. I posted too early. And from the new information that has been brought up, I decided to make another post. There was a paragraph that I included about Mark being stingy with money. I explained that everyone in the family got along, but Mark was always asking for money, never paying it back, and participating in frivolous spending. I didn't realize until now that this paragraph would have been more relevant. In the original post, I explained that he paid for half of the wedding venue, so it was understandable that he would exclude people from the wedding and go against traditions of including the whole family in the party. He told us, I just want a small wedding. I don't have to follow traditions. We were angry and threatened to leave the wedding entirely. Reddit called me in awe for this. Initially, I would have agreed if it was just this information, but it turns out he lied. He did not contribute a single cent to the wedding. Not for the venue, not for the catering, not for the DJ nothing. In fact, my mother, Carol, paid for most of it, while the future-in-laws paid for the half of the venue he said he paid. Carol funded the clothes, the food, the MC, and 75% of the venue, and she is still pouring thousands of dollars into the wedding for more things. Mark is insisting on demanding more things for the wedding, which includes excluding some of our family from the wedding party. Meanwhile, he's not paying for the party's dresses or suits. Once again, he is expecting the rest of us to foot the bill while he sits back and doesn't plan his own wedding. He won't let Carol invite people she wants to even though she's paying and her guests wouldn't break capacity. Carol can't take it anymore. She's stressed about having to do this herself. I've seen her and my father cry out to him. It doesn't even seem worth it anymore. Ada, relevant comments. Lantazana. Y T E S, except Mark. The fact that your mom's paying doesn't mean that she gets to make all the choices. If her love and support are conditioned on getting her way, she shouldn't have offered. She's just borrowing. If your brother isn't so close to your siblings, he shouldn't have to include them in his party. He may have other people he wants to include, and you are certainly a lot of siblings and acting awfully entitled. The same goes for your mom inviting her friends. The party is not about her. Why is that hard to understand? It's Mark's wedding. He and his future spouse should invite whom they want. They should have the parties they want. And if your mom and siblings can't handle this not being about them, they need a reality check. It's sad how transactional you all are. OP. My mother is paying for more than half of the venue and everything else at the wedding. She and Mark made a list of people who were to be included in the wedding, including people she wanted to invite that were approved by the two of them. And he is now deciding to take back his word. The in-laws are being treated with priority, and everyone on that side is being catered to and invited. Meanwhile, we're being left behind. Mark lied about paying for things. He lied about the invite list. He lied about the venue. Madiket. I need clarification. Are the other siblings invited to the wedding, and just not in the wedding party, or not invited at all? OP. All the siblings were invited. But at first, my brother purposely left them out of the wedding party. It took his fiancée and other members of the wedding party to let the rest of the siblings be at the wedding in that regard. There was room for all of us, and the clothes for the party are being funded by my mother. But he decided not to include us initially. Hal Jordan 55. Why is that a problem? What is wrong with just being a guest? Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.